Introducing QL320 version 2.0 by Providence Photonics. Now featuring continuous quantification, live results as they occur. Now, here's John Morris, CTO of Providence Photonics, with more. Hello, welcome everyone. I'm John Morris with Providence Photonics, and I'm going to introduce the latest version of QL320 version 2. If you're a QL320 user and you're familiar with previous versions, I'll, I'll show you what's different about the version 2. And if you've never seen a QL320, this will be a great introduction, let you know what the product is all about. So what we're looking at right now is the desktop of the QL320. This particular QL320 is already connected to a FLIR GF320 camera via USB cable. It's already pointed at a leak that we want to quantify. And so the first step is to launch the QL320 application. So if you're familiar with previous versions of the QL320, the first thing you're going to notice is that we're already quantifying this plume. So this is the new continuous mode in the version 2 of the QL320. Continuous mode is a feature that uh, processes images uh, immediately, interactively, and uh, immediately provides you the result as a rolling average. So before I explain what continuous mode is, let me show what the previous modes of the QL320, how they work. So if I switch mode to batch, say batch of three. This is what the previous version of the QL320 looked like. The way this worked in the past uh, and the way it works now in batch mode is you point the camera at a leak source. You put the center of the leak roughly in the crosshair. This one's a little off, but that's okay. And then you enter the information about the leak. You need to tell the QL320, is this a black plume or a white plume? Uh, which lens is attached to the camera? The distance from the camera to the leak? The ambient temperature? What type of gas we're quantifying? What type of leak it is, whether it's a point release or a diffuse release? And the wind speed. Once you've entered that information, you hit capture. And in this case, we have a batch of three. The way that works is we will capture 100 frames, write those frames to the disk, and immediately process them to extract the plume, measure the, uh, the leak rate, and we're going to, in this case, repeat that three times and provide an average. It's called batch mode. It's batch in that we're, we're capturing all the frames at once and then saving them and then processing them all as a batch. That's really how all of the previous QL320 versions worked. You had a normal mode, which is essentially a batch of one, and then you could choose a batch mode of five that would give you an, an average result across five sets of 100 frames. Here, you can see I'm on my third three of three, in my batch of three, and now I have my average leak rate and my average delta T for that batch. So that's how version one worked. Version two, you have another option. It's called continuous mode. Continuous mode uh, processes the frames as we grab them. So you immediately get a rolling average of your result. Down here, we have a one second average, a five second average, and a one minute average. As soon as you see this capture button turn green, you have enough data here to capture a result. And you can see here, I've written the result, saved it to the disk, and that's it. You have your your measurement. So continuous mode is much more streamlined, much easier to use in the field. Uh, you'll be able to take a measurement in less than a minute. Uh, and, and I think you're really, if you're a QL320 user and uh, you're taking this out into the field, you're really going to like the continuous mode. So while we're on this screen, let me introduce some of the features of continuous mode. Here we have your rolling averages which are, as I mentioned, one second, five second, and one minute. You have a capture button here, so whenever you, you can uh, monitor these averages, and you can see this capture button is alternating between green and red. Whenever the button's enabled, you can save the last five seconds of frames that derive this result. If it's green, it means your average values are 
uh, close to each other, meaning uh, your relative standard deviation is small and you have a good representative number. It's basically the QL320 telling you it's safe to save this result now because you have enough data and the data is consistent. If you ever see the box go red, you can still save the result, but you you will um, uh, your your averages may be uh, further apart than you would like. Uh, anytime you want, you can hit the reset button. It will reset the background or reset the averages. You start start counting again. You'll notice in the image here we have some color overlays. Uh, these can be configured now in version two. We go here to option and overlay. See, we have three overlays available to us. Delta T, plume, and boundary. So delta T is the red part of this image. And these are the parts of the image. If you have a previous version of QL320, this is analogous to the screening mode. So the parts that you see that are red don't have enough delta T to apply this method. So uh, you wouldn't want to try and measure the plume in those areas. If you ever want to turn that overlay off, you can simply come here to overlay and it'll, and you can turn it off. You can also turn off the uh, plume overlay. So it will no longer highlight the plume green and you can turn off the measurement boundary if you ever wanted to do that. One reason I can think of to do this might be if you're if you're just doing a temperature screen, maybe you just want to see which parts are are have sufficient delta T. Uh, but in general, you're you're probably going to want to leave all of these overlays on. Let me turn them back on. Um, left to right across the top shows some of the other new features of, of version two. Under units, you can now set your uh, distance and your temperature independently if you. I want to choose metric or standard units. You also have many more options for leak rate. I can change between standard cubic centimeters per minute, standard liters per minute, grams per hour, standard cubic feet per hour, pounds per hour, metric tons per year, or the raw signal value. Let me change it to liters per minute. You see my results now are presented in, in liters per minute. We've already talked about continuous mode and batch mode. You have three options here for batch. This will basically be uh, how many sets of 100 frames are averaged. There's also uh, a calibration mode if you ever want to override the factory calibrations. One new feature of version two is a new control which gives you more options for setting the sensitivity of the plume extraction. Right now we're running in auto mode where the QL320 algorithm is determining what threshold to apply to separate the plume from the background. But if you run into a situation in the field where either you're not getting all the plume extracted or maybe you're getting too much, you have too much noise in there, you have the option to switch to manual sensitivity mode. You'll notice when you do, you'll have a slider bar that shows up underneath the image. And right away you can see my sensitivity is too low. There's portions of the plume here that are not being highlighted. So uh, I can increase the sensitivity by clicking the plus sign here. And you see as I increase the sensitivity, I'm getting more and more plume extraction. And in general, you want to be, you want the sensitivity as high as it can be without introducing background noise. So you can see when I get to sensitivity of nine, now I'm starting to get noise in the image. Really, my sensitivity is too high. So I would back out one. Now I am satisfied with this. I'm getting all the plume, but I'm not getting any noise in the background. So it just gives you a little more control over the plume, plume extraction. Another option that was there in the QL in previous versions of the QL320 is the notched ring. So this is good if you're measuring, say, vents or stacks or, or for any reason you want to delete the bottom of the measurement ring. One handy feature in version 2 that is new is a masking feature. 
what the mask will do is allow you to exclude portions of the field of view from the processing or the measurement. So what you can do if you turn the mask feature on, now let's suppose this portion here, maybe this was a reflective object or maybe an object that's moving uh, in the wind and I want it excluded from the uh, measurement. What I can do if the masking feature is on is draw a diagonal line in the image, which will define a rectangle on the image. Anything inside this rectangle will be excluded from processing. So this can be very handy in the field if there's a particular interference that you just can't get out of the field of view. Just draw a mask on it and you can uh, exclude it that way. If you want to get rid of the mask, just turn the feature off. Um, really, those are the main features of the of the version two QL320. Um, there's one additional feature that if you if you've done a lot of field work with previous versions, you're going to appreciate. If you uh, the the file structure itself has been simplified and streamlined. If you spend any time uh, manipulating files captured with previous versions. You know, it generated a lot of files. It was hard to keep them all together. Now all of your data, all of your metadata and image data is uh, written to a single file, uh, which is date time stamped and has an extension of .dat. So if I select this file and load it, it's now playing back that recorded, uh, that, that image that we recorded a few minutes ago and everything you need is, is in that single file. So it's a lot easier to kind of manage the, um, manage the um, uh, archive data. So you see here I got the same result as when we recorded it. So after you look at an archive file, you can always hit the live button and go back and now we're looking at a streaming image again. So uh, that's the introduction. As always, you can contact us at so the easiest way to contact us if you have any questions about your QL320 or just uh, want to follow up with learn more about this technology, send an email to support at providencephotonics.com and someone will get back to you uh, right away to answer your questions. Thank you for joining us and I hope you enjoy the new version of the QL320.